The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. What time is it? There is nobody that holds a candle to the king. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to, like, maybe you, you build some tag teams here. We are the absolute best tag team of all time, bar none, the greatest tag team of all time. Jay White's going to be a star um, no matter where he goes. I'm going to be the guy that spits in the face of cliches. I'm going to be the guy that tells time to f*** off. Man, what in the world is Joe doing? Just standing. And then I thought to myself, maybe he just likes Jericho's music as much as I do. Yes, yes. Hi. Yes, Mustafa Ali did breach the no-fly zone on me. But you know what? We're making progress, Dasha. Yes, I saw him win with a clean technical maneuver today. And that is a sign. That's a good sign. You know, I believe in a better 205 Live. Yes, I do. And I believe that my campaign will be the change that 205 Live needs. But change takes time. Patience and time. Patience and time. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling to the max. And your host, Gary Vaughn, Sean Garmer, and Paul Leeser. Welcome, everybody, to Wrestling to the Max, episode 250, part two. And today, like always, we are brought to you by W2Mnet.com. That's right, the place where you go find all your great wrestling content, plus a lot more. Also, once again, please go subscribe at Wrestling to the Max or the W2M Network. Both are great. One gives you just our content. The other gives you everything over there at the W2Mnet.com family. Also, we're going to start being, uh, you know, partnering back up with Formula One Mania.com. Those guys over there are pretty awesome, too. So we're going to be letting you guys know about that. So if you want to go check out their great content, hey, go do so. I am Gary Vaughn. Along with me is Mr. Sean Garmer. What's up, everybody? And Mr. Paul Leeser. hey And boy, guys, we got a great show in store for everyone. This week we'll be talking uh, some big news topics. You know, of course, we'll be getting back into some discussions on what's going on with this roster switch situation. We're hearing some rumors about Hideo Itami and his future with NXT. We'll also be talking about JR and a certain match that he wants to call. It's about a pay-per-view uh, that, you know, is coming up pretty soon here. Also, we'll be getting into some great New Japan stuff. That's right. We're talking Dominion. We'll be previewing that as well as, you know, maybe getting a little bit more of a recap from Sean over the, the fin- finale of the Super Juniors. He didn't get a chance to talk about it on the show, so we want to get his idea before we do jump into Dominion on what he thought about that as well. Plus, we'll be getting into some Lucha Underground. That's right. So we'll get that, uh, some great stuff out of that. Plus, crowning a Superstar of the Week. So we've got a full one ahead of us i am looking forward to all of it i hope you guys are too uh and you know once again i mean there's a lot of stuff going out there besides the world of wrestling i know paul uh my wife may be going and checking out wonder woman this week i just wanted to know do you think she's going to enjoy this film overwhelmingly i i think so i enjoyed it a lot i saw it on sunday uh i everybody it's wonderfully well acted and well directed the only problem i had was who they cast as aries uh, but other than that, you know, it's a good time. It's a really good time. Good. See, I, I knew to come to you to make sure that I got that information because I know you had checked up on it. I, I'm, I'm excited about some of these movies coming out. Uh, my birthday, Spider-Man is going to be out, so I may actually do that on my birthday. We'll find out if that's going to be a good movie then. Uh, but still, we're, we're still in this summer series of movies and a lot of fun stuff. 
And I know, Sean, I mean, hopefully you'll get to do go check out some movies, but I know you got a big, big event coming up here, and it really is going to affect the W2Mnet.com family, especially at the game section. You're about to be a very, very busy man. Yeah, that time of year where uh, the gaming world starts, it becomes mainstream for a week and then goes, I mean, it's it's pretty mainstream as it is, but it becomes the sort of a center of attention, uh, especially with Microsoft unveiling their Scorpio. Uh, so uh, E3 2017 is almost upon us and it starts a day even earlier on Saturday and then it goes on all the way to Thursday. So, uh, yeah, this should be fun. We're going to be full haul, posting trailers and doing some press release posts and, of course, doing podcasts for the press conferences and all that stuff. So, going to be a lot going on at com on the WTM Network for the podcasts and uh, going to have people on uh, to talk about it that, you know, you don't hear all the time. So, that's cool, too. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we're hoping it doesn't interfere with our part one this Monday, but it might. So, you know, uh, we'll see. Hopefully we'll have Sean on that part one. But, you know, I totally get it. The game section has, you know, him tied down with E3. So we'll find out Monday. But right now we have a big show for everybody Thursday. (laughs) It was just tonight. Technically, everybody else is listening to this on Friday morning on the download. Uh, But let's go ahead and get into our first thing. Quick hit. So let's go ahead and jump into some wrestling news this week, guys. It's time for Wrestling News. Quick Hits. Take it away, Gary. All righty. Let's start out this thing by talking about some rumors. That's right. Hideo Itami is the big rumor, and his status with WB is the big thing in question. We've heard that there's a possibility when his contract expires with WB that he's going to be heading back to Japan. That's right. But we don't know that for a fact. In fact, WB kind of had a segment with Hideo Itami where he shot this whole thing down. So we don't really know. But, I mean, it brings up a lot of questions on, you know, how comfortable is he in the U.S.? Does he feel like he's got a place here? Or does he feel like his home is the better option for his career? I mean, Sean, I mean, how do you... I mean, really, where do you sit on this? Do you think that he's really going to leave? Or do you think he should stick around? Uh, you know, I feel like he's just now starting to do something in NXT, so I'd hate for him to leave right before he's able to really get his potential. You know, I, I just hate seeing that. But, I mean, if he lasts till the end of 2017 and he really feels like he hasn't gone anywhere and... We all know that if he goes back to Japan, he will be huge immediately. And even, uh, you know, maybe New Japan will try to outbid Noah for his services. Or maybe he just goes back to Noah out of loyalty immediately. But uh, either way, um, he obviously knows what he has in Japan. I just think that I hope that he really gets a shot at doing more things in NXT and it, it makes it hard for him to make that final decision when the time comes. And it's not just that, okay, I'm going back to Japan because I never got to do anything here. And it is what it is. But, you know, to be fair, a lot of it isn't necessarily anybody's fault. He got hurt and, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like WWE just makes you get injured on purpose. Right. Uh, so So here's the thing. He's 36. Uh, he has two, he has a major shoulder surgery on him and some, oh God, 17 years of wear and tear already on his body. Uh, I would say it really depends on where he thinks he is right now, health wise and where the rest of the year plays out for him. Because if, if he manages to stay healthy again and can keep on trucking an NXT and looks like he's going to go somewhere then for sure stay. And even if not, then stay for another year just to see what pans out after that. But I think going back to Japan after all this would be rash. Now, if he does, I'm of the mind of Sean that he goes back to Noah out of loyalty, although I'm sure New Japan would make a bid because now he he has a lot of mainstream presence here in the States, and we know what New Japan wants to do there, and it makes a lot of sense. And 
working in New Japan is exclusive. Working in Noah opens up your door. So he doesn't necessarily have to do just Noah. He can freelance if he wants and do the whole circuit pretty much except for New Japan over there if he wanted to. So lots of options. I would say stick it out. Uh, mostly just because, I like Sean, I'd hate to see him sort of waste the opportunity just because of injuries. But if his health and all that calls him back home, then there's a lot of opportunity there too. Yeah, for sure. And we've seen, and like me and Paul discussed on the NXT review, the direction they have him going where he's getting to be more aggressive and he's kind of going back to what he was in Japan, it seems like that's a direction that's more positive for him. And that seems like it could lead him on to really, you know, good paths down the line. Uh, from where he's at right now, but we just don't know on how he feels personally. And I, I really didn't think about that fact, Paul, about the fact that all these injuries are piled up because, man, he's had a lot of mileage on his body. And there's been a lot of, you know, situations where he's had to kind of overcome some big injuries and really have mental thoughts of, don't want to keep doing this, you know. Mm-hmm. We saw Tajiri just leave WB because of this reason. He needed to go wrestle in Japan where he felt it was more comfortable for him and in a situation where his body wouldn't take the beating week in and week out. So, very interesting. And I think all of us want Hideo and Tommy to stick around just so we can see some of the big heights that he can hit because we, we you know, believe in his talent. Uh, let's talk about JR real quick here. Uh, JR recently stated on his blog that he would like to, you know, call that Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe match at Great Balls of Fire in Dallas. And in fact, on his podcast, he kind of kept mentioning, oh, yeah, it's just a, a drive down the road for me in Oklahoma. So he keeps pointing that out. It makes me wonder if they already have something in store for us or if that's just him wishing and hoping, which. I almost want to lean towards the wishing and hoping because I don't know why you would really need him to call this match. What do you think, Paul? Uh, I think it depends on what they're going to go for here. If they want that grand feeling that this match is going to matter uh, for Samoa Joe and it's a big deal and all of that, then then do it. I don't think anything really lends itself more to a big fight field than JR's voice right now. And If it's just the one match on the road... I why why not do it? Like it it could be a bigger deal than you think it is, and suddenly you have a breakout star on Raw and Samoa Joe. Yeah, I love to see it. I like the idea of Jr. coming in doing one match. For I mean, you don't have to do it for each pay per view, but him doing it for you know you pick a pay per view a month, unless you have something like SummerSlam where obviously it's dual branded, but. You know, and, and say, okay, I want this to be the JR match, this to be the match that you're really going to showcase and make it a big deal by him showing up and being on there. And I like that idea. I, I, you know, like Paul said, you know, you can, the commentary can help make uh, Samoa Joe even bigger by the end of the night. I just, I like to, you know, obviously, look, he's not, He's not uh, what he used to be, but he still adds a bit of gravitas to the situation. Uh, I think, you know, certainly with the European, the you know, the UK thing, you know, Nigel helped him a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't even mind if it's him and Nigel doing that match, honestly. I think they work so well together that you could put both of them in there. He knows Samoa Joe. That's another reason why you put Nigel in the, as his com- color commentator, so... I'd I'd love to see it. Yeah, I mean, I I get it, and JR is a legend, and it's nice to hear his voice on those big matches. The one thing I'll kind of play devil's advocate here is why mess up the chemistry? Why just stop the show commentary-wise and throw in JR just for the big match? So I don't have to hear JBL. Well, that is a good point. Uh, but you know, this well, I mean, is the on, raw brand. You wouldn't so. have to, but still. <laughs> yeah, but but hey, you'd have to hear David Otonga. No, it's still Booker. So. Or well, Booker T. Yeah, I thought Otunga was coming back for this great this great balls of fire. Oh, he is oh I've God, heard, please no! I've heard that he's coming back sooner because Booker T is not as good as him. Apparently, what? I'm, I'm kidding. Man, I'm kidding. Crack. I, I think he's on crack oh. by hiring Otunga to do the commentary in general. Um, 
I don't mind him doing the pre-show. Just stay on the pre-show. Yeah. Stay on the the analysis table. Yeah, exactly. Because I I fast forward to that. So please do that. Stay on there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, enough about Otonga. I just but you know this whole Jr. thing. I mean, I I. I do appreciate the fact that they're putting him back in the mix in places, but once again, I mean, I, I don't know that I'm sold that it has to be these type of matches. The Undertaker thing was great because it was that once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's the last match you're ever going to see under Undertaker. JR covered almost all of Undertaker's career in the WWE, WWF, what do you want to say? So that made a lot of sense to me, but I don't know that this does so much for me, even though I love JR. I think his work on the UK and if he does go to the women's show and that tournament, I think that's great. But I don't know. Who knows? Uh, let's move over and talk a little bit more about that network. And let's talk about the fact that they may be adding some more content. And we're thinking about this because we've heard lots of rumors once again about this and the possibility. But it looks like something's coming to fruition. What I'm talking about is Insane Championship Wrestling. They are taking their content. Uh, of, you know, They're going to get rid of it off another streaming service and they are going to you know possibly be putting it on the WWE network and the reason I say that is because of the fact that their content was on the Fight TV and that was a big deal for them I think you know they really thought it was great to have on there and of course I got them lots of eyes but I think now the WWE having uh, so much invested with them now it just tends to leave us with the thought that they will be moving it to the network I mean Sean do you really feel like that's going to be taking place Oh, this deal is almost everything but been confirmed officially by WWE. So uh, it's almost been like, well, what's taking so long? It's got to happen at some point. Uh, I feel like if you're taking it off Fight TV, it's for some reason not just because, oh, we just felt like making our things less accessible to people. Mm -hmm. It's got to be that you're finally moving it to WWE Network. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense logically. Uh, ICW had their Fight Club TV show on there. You could also order their bigger events through Fight TV to watch. Uh, moving it all to the network. I mean, you signed a deal. It's going to be a thing. Hopefully this means progress follows suit. I uh, definitely hope that means progress follows suit for sure. Also, they did add 50 more hours of Tuesday Night Titans if you want to watch that. Which I recommend if you like 80s wrestling, some awesome stuff on there. Definitely. That is really cool. And yeah, I'm with you guys. You know, with the WWE, you know, looking at all these other promotions and, and of course, adding Insane Championship Wrestling and, of course, Progress, that, that would, man, that would definitely be something to really bring in the wrestling fans and really, honestly, get people to buy the network if they're not just sold on watching WWE content all the time maybe they do want to see some other stuff that's a big selling point in fact i really think that's also a good way for wb to say hey 999 hey, is not cutting it anymore let's raise it just a little bit maybe 15 or 14.99 or something you know if they wanted to raise the price i think that's the best way to say hey you know we should deserve a little bit more money we're giving you even more content you know besides just the stuff we create so who knows I, i'm just throwing that out there but i mean i, I think that you know in state championship wrestling being on the network is something i'm excited about personally i just cannot wait uh well you know talking about the network we have 205 live which is on that network that does not do so well uh people really are not tuning in a lot on that show which is kind of a bummer because they have some good content they have lots of great talent over there what WB's thinking is that maybe they can do what they did recently, like they added Sasha Banks onto that 205 Live show just recently and hoping that they can get some more eyes on it. So we could be seeing more women from Raw or SmackDown join up on there and probably Raw more. Uh, but what do you think about that, Paul? I mean, do you think adding women to the 205 Live shows will really do some more numbers for them? I don't think it's about numbers doing this. I think it's about showcasing women more on the network to hype up the Mae Young Classic. Uh, so whether whether they think this is going to help numbers or not, probably ultimately secondary to the fact that they're going to take a bit of a risk uh, with, with this women's tournament and trying to get people interested in that when I think women's wrestling being so prevalent in WWE is still so new. Uh, so the more they can showcase it to the people who have the network, I think the better. 
Yeah, I think there's some of that too. I think it also might get some of the women that are complaining about not getting TV time. You you get TV time on this. Uh, you know, I I really hope that this means the women are going to have storylines on here and not, oh, we're going to go back to the old style of, oh, we're just going to be valets for people and you're not going to have much of a – look, I like the Alicia Fox and uh, Noam Dar pairing. You don't use Alicia Fox a lot. That's fine. But like someone like Sasha Banks needs to be doing more than just being in Rich Swan's corner. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just to give an example. Um, or even someone like Emma, I'd hate to see her just be used in that form. Uh, so if you're going to do something positive with the women on there – that's fine. If you're going to have them have a match, I'm fine with that too. Just don't – more being progressive and, and getting the women time, not doing more of what you get with Alicia Fox. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, I think that, you know, overall – this could be a really positive situation for you know the women, of course, for two hundred five live. But it just makes me wonder how you are really going to draw people in. I know you can advertise these kind of things all day long and advertise, hey, you've got some you know new matches, and it's not just these young cruiserweights. There's also these ladies coming over here, and hey, if you like following them or one of them, come check it out. Which it, it could. But I still have a hard time believing that it's going to be a big enough draw. I, you're going to have to have some heavy hitters to do it, and I just don't even know if they're willing to do that. I don't even. I didn't look at the numbers. I have no idea how many Sasha brought in, but I don't think it was a huge amount. I, I've not heard that. Man, 205 Live blew up because Sasha Banks was on that show, and you know, even throwing in singles matches between some of these ladies, I, I don't know. I'm not really sold that it's going to do a whole lot, but I hope it does. I really do. I, I want them to open that door in any way they can get it to go and be successful. I'm open and I'm game. I think you should try it. I'm just saying I have a lot of reservations if it's going to actually work. Right. So, all right. Well, I mean, uh, talking about with the women, uh, let's be honest. Uh, there's been some situations on the internet and cybersecurity when it comes to some of these young ladies on the internet uh we even of course we all know the charlotte fiasco and even some of these other uh women that have not been a part of wb for a while popping up and of course some videos that you know very adult and uh some other situations that you know pictures and things like that have come out on their social media accounts that were hacked so this is a big deal and wb knows this they've actually held a mandatory meeting over this in cybersecurity, and they've actually brought their, all their talent in, kind of productive some classes where they told them, you know, how to be secure and what to do and what not to do, all that good stuff. And in fact, they've even made them sign some amendments to their contracts stating that they have to follow along some policies. One of those policies being that they cannot have two social media accounts, they can only have the one. So it kind of keeps the re- it's really safe from having to worry about, you know, our account's great, but the one that they have personally is doing a lot of damage. So uh, I think that, you know, this is something that they kind of have to do. And it's obvious that not only WWE, but Hollywood is dealing with the same issue. Sean, I mean, it's sad, but I mean, this is the way things have to work now. And, and now it's harder for these, you know, even not just the young ladies, even the guys. We've seen Seth Rollins go to the same stuff, too. Yeah, I mean, it sucks that uh, you kind of lose a little bit of privacy, but that's kind of what happens when you work uh, for a corporation. They start being able to tell you what you cannot and uh, can do as long as you work for them. That's And uh, you knew this was coming, right? You knew this was going to happen with the paid situation, uh, with Charlotte, with uh, even former divas that you know got hacked, um, it can happen to anybody. And I think the point of that also was to you know to let them know, hey, stop leaving stuff in the cloud. You know, make sure you're watching for things and paying attention, and and don't just 
randomly take USBs from people and all those kind of things. And look, uh, I hate it that they can't have second accounts. Uh, just for them, I'm sure they'd like to have an account where friends and family can be on and don't have to see wrestling fans being like way too ridiculous or uh, or just being rude to them. Uh, you know, especially with the women, like some of the stuff that guys say it on Twitter is just it's nasty. It's terrible. And, like, I don't know that they want, like, their parents seeing that, per se, or, or whatever. Um, and that's perhaps one of the reasons why they may have a second account. Or they may have a Facebook under their real name. And they limit the kind of people that, that uh, you know, uh, interact with them there and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, and like Cody right now, he would be in breach of contract because he has two social media accounts. Uh, as sad as that is to say, WWE feels like they have to do that now because literally you could be on another account and have a totally different life and be doing some like shady shit. And they find out after you've already done all the shady stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, uh, I mean... This just makes sense nowadays. Like, you've had all these problems in the last six months to a year. Hollywood has had this problem for a long time. Like, if you're trying to put a rain on it, this is this is the way you got to do it, right? Hey, it's the truth. And, you know, we've seen, like I said, not just WB, but, you know, Hollywood and, uh, you know, a lot of other people. I mean, even just everyday folks are dealing with a situation who... Sadly, you know, it's also ended up being tragic for a lot of young kids, you know, who made some decisions out there in their life. And, of course, those things got exposed and led them down a a line of, you know, suicide or other tragedies and bullying and things like that. So this is the world we live in. You know, we all live on our phones. We all live on our laptops, our computers. It's just the way we are now. And with that comes, you know other situations and that's what WWE's having to handle now they're having to kind of jump into this at first and hopefully stop some of the stuff from going on with their superstars you know it just saddens me you know i don't think we're ever going to see any Braun Strowman nudes or anything i was like man but uh, yeah. yeah you never oh, know it's closed gary it's all closed <laughs> Oh, man, it's just... I don't know uh, if this is going to close that door. I feel like there's still going to be that person that's not going to... I don't think that this obviously... You know, that this doesn't mean that if you do get hacked, WWE's going to do something to you. That's still not your fault, per se. Um, I still don't think that this foolproofs anyone, because there's always going to be that person that forgets, you know, or whatever, unless they assign people... WWE assigns people themselves to start going through your pictures, and if they find anything risque, like, all right, I know this is personal. What do you want to do? You kind of need to either find somewhere to put this, or you need to erase it. And I don't think they're they're going to go to that extreme. But unless you're doing something like that, there's always going to be that person that does something, and they forget, and it leaves them open. So. Mm-hmm. People just got to be more vigilant about those things, and you know, you do. And not only that, you got to think about the brass. You got to think about Vince and some of those other executives who are looking at the people that they're employing. They're looking at a guy like Enzo Amore, you know, uh, who you know may decide to take pictures of his junk, and that maybe they've seen it before. So they're just like, yeah, we probably should be careful about you know. And, and you know, you also have. New talents you're signing? Uh, is it Hojo or is it EO? Uh, yeah. Who you know, of course, has already had content out there on the internet that WWE's not really you know enjoying because it's not family friendly. So they're having to make those choices based on the talent they have and the talent that's coming in too. So lots I think of things that that's different though. Like with Lana, she already had pictures. I think it's different if it's done in an artistic way. They don't. Think of it as the same way as, you know, nude leaks or whatever, you know, because obviously EO and Kyrie stuff are were done for that promotion in a very tasteful way for Playboy. They were not done to be, you know, 
really sexual and all that kind of stuff about it. So right. I mm-hmm. mean, part of Stardom's yeah. existence is based off of using their wrestlers as models. So, I mean, you can't really get upset about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, but you, but, you know, you have to, I guess, you're right. You can't really... I mean, you can find people. it if you look it up, which, obviously, you know, WWE's not going to like, per se, but they can't really get mad because it's not like they're out there just... There's, like, them having sex Yeah, I mean, they're not whatever. out in the corner just taping themselves banging all the time. I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which you can get for seven ninety nine on them. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gary, what are you trying to say? I'm not starting up a new streaming service. Wow. <laughs> I got Gary After Dark. We'll talk about that there. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I was about to uh, say, does Gary pay for something he needs to talk to us about? <laughs> Uh, my addiction is not that. Yeah, I was about to say, well, damn, there's, there's where all your money's going now. <laughs> yeah, really, right? Oh, that'd be terrible. Uh, I'd, I'd be killed by my wife. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> and, and let's move on from my death. Uh, let's talk about something, you know, we'll kind of close the quickest So if out. Gary's not on next week, you know what happened. Yeah, you know exactly. Slice <laughs> to the throat. Uh, that, uh, that Irish anger is very dangerous. Don't tap into it. Would she do... Uh, uh, who was it that that person that that cut off the guy's dick? Oof, pretty close to it. I don't know. Is she she she's Irish. She'd probably pound my face in, then do it. I'd probably be Damn. dead. If I felt it. Call Seamus and dial one eight hundred fellow too. Yeah, Oof. he ain't gonna save you. Nope. He he's, he's like <laughs> he already knows. He's like sorry, fella. You're out yeah. of luck here. <laughs> oh. uh, but anyway. All right, well, um, let's you know do one last thing before we jump out of quick hit. So let's kind of give some updates on some of these health situations in New Japan. We've seen the, a rash of injuries and things. So, Paul, can you lead us down that path and kind of talk about some of these updates and the health of the New Japan stars? Right. So, uh, of course, Shibata and Hanma are still on the bench recovering from injuries. Shibata's health since the surgeries has remained the same, so his prognosis to return to wrestling has skyrocketed to, to near zero. Uh, however, he seems much happier, and there's a lot of talk in the New Japan office that they're going to possibly make him a coach uh, for the dojo and, and uh, maybe some other backstage duties. Hanma, however, has continued to improve. Uh, he can uh, he started doing light jogging workouts, but as far as fine motor skills go, he still needs to rehab that. He has problems brushing his teeth, and uh, I believe pouring water was another example they gave. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah it's oh, super depressing. <laughs> oh, man, it makes you well, cry. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, you know, uh, I appreciate the update, Paul, and I, I, just, I just hate to hear that. But I, I'm glad at least that he's able to do some of that, even though it's troublesome. You know, uh, we could be looking at more serious than that. I mean, you got to look at the bright side, right? Um, so let's just hope better things in the future for him. And, you know, these injuries hopefully will get better. So, uh, well, we are about to move on guys and talk some Lucha underground, which I'm excited about. Uh, once again, Sean and I are idiots. We forgot like, like totally Sean's been really super busy and I was so focused on a lot of other wrestling content. I forgot to watch Lucha, but guess what? Paul watched it and he's got a three fair order. Gary and I both don't have El Rey. So we have yeah. to wait till Paul can send us another way to watch it, and we forgot to do that this week. So next week, mm-hmm. we'll make sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that on our phones to alarm, tell you to watch it. But anyway, Paul is going to talk about Lucha Underground this week, and I'm very excited about that. Plus, don't forget, we're also going to do any preview to Dominion. Uh, but before we jump into it, really quickly, I want to ask you guys this. What, were any of you guys offended by the size of the money in the bank briefcase for the the women. I, I was watching SmackDown this week, and you guys did a great job on the SmackDown review. But you really didn't jump into this, and I kind of looked at it. And, and I love what Sean kind of said, because it made me wonder if there's some women out there who watched this and thought the exact same thing who could probably get pissed. I saw uh, men talking about, who cares? <laughs> I don't understand how small- what the big deal is. I uh, I often hear that size doesn't matter, you guys. I don't know if that's true, oh. <laughs> but uh, that's what I often hear. Yeah, they don't call me jelly bean for you. Some women, they, <laughs> apparently it does. Gary? 
Uh, <laughs> uh, sweet, sweet, but just not huge, right? No, I'm just <laughs> it's all about the girth, Gary. It's all about the girth. It's oh what's boy. inside that counts, though, right? That's that's. Oh thing man, yep. we're we're switching to Gary after dark already. We're not even talking about wrestling anymore. We've done uh, this twice now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I'll take it down a serious road, though, but you're right, Sean. And, and that's the thing. I think about the fact that uh, I, I appreciate the fact that they are trying to make it a little dainty, I guess, but really it's not It's not pink. I guess you could give it that credit. It's just a white briefcase. But at the same point, it's like, well, why can't you just make it the regular size? and just It's just white to showcase that, hey, this is a different briefcase. It's not the blue one. Um, but I don't know. I just thought that was kind of funny. I mean, maybe... Carmella can't lift very much or something, you know? So maybe they did it that way. Who knows? I mean, she could probably pick up... uh, She could probably pick up Jane Zellsworth. We don't know that. Yeah, true. Do you like the briefcase better, Paul? Do you like the way it it looks? I think it looks better, personally. I do, too. Hmm? Yeah, the white works really well with the logo and everything. It's true. I mean, some people, you know, it's weird. It's all about a matter of taste, right? You know, some people like having the big phones. Some people like having the, you know, the smaller phones. Mm-hmm. So it's like that with almost anything. It's it's all about your preference. And maybe they just kind of, who knows? They could have they could have uh, talked to the women about, hey, do you like this design? It's smaller. And they all agreed it was cool. Or maybe they didn't talk to them at all. We don't know. But, I mean... I just don't see how the size of the briefcase determines anything. Yeah, and that's a good point. I mean, it may not. It may be once again something they discussed behind the scenes, and maybe the lady said hey, we want it to be different. We don't want it to be exactly the same. Heck, maybe Natalia said I wanted the color of my cat. So maybe so. No well, two paws. Call it, two call paws, it the baby. Two paws. In the bank briefcase. <laughs> yeah. Now that would be awesome if she opened it and two paws was inside. That'd be well, golden. Imagine all that. Pretty sure two paws would be dead. Wrestling meets <laughs> cat videos. Oh. Think of the views. Oh, you're right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that pay-per-view is already getting an eight for me if that happens. Well, fun. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Money in the Bank's a couple of weeks away, so we can move on past that. But yeah, let's, let's move on from this. Uh, let's talk some Lucha Underground. So we'll be right back right after this, guys, with some Lucha right your way. All right, this, uh, this week's episode of Lucha Underground picks up right where the last one left off, essentially. Um, for, first off, they, they highlight everything that happened last week, and then they sort of touch on a couple of things uh, that you're going to see on this show, like Prince Puma hanging out in Lucha Underground's favorite backstage area, the bathroom. Um, he's sort of having a flood of memories come across him, uh, and of course they, they're playing video in the background. Rey Mysterio shows up and is worried that Vampiro is simply using him for a tool, which of course we all know that he is. Uh, and Puma, you know, sort of brings up the fact that that's pretty much all he's been. Like, Ray, he thinks Ray used him, he thinks Conan used him, which is, is true. And, uh, Puma says Ray isn't really his friend, and just sort of leaves as Vampiro shows up in the background and, uh, says he's gonna send Ray Mysterio to hell, uh, which is awesome. So, uh, <laughs> uh, then, then we get the continuation of, uh, Mundo in the Mac for the Lucha Underground title. Dario, however, makes it a false count anywhere match. Uh, these guys go about another 10 minutes uh, and just, they absolutely destroy each other. It's great. You have a whole bunch of run ins for Mundo, which is what allows him to retain. As uh, Taya sort of pulls him, Max smacks his face off the ring apron and then eats a uh, sunset flip power bomb onto a pile of chairs. I marked out incredibly that's still one of my favorite moves in pro wrestling, and Johnny Mundo is still. Your Lucha Underground champion. Yeah, and I got to say a couple of things. Um, I got to watch this match because, I mean, you were telling me how great the first one was when they actually had the, the all the, the episode where there's all that match, right? Yeah, all um, night long. All night long. And then this one sounds really cool, too. So I can't wait to watch this and, and get into it myself. And so we really look forward to that. But I, I have to say, if Puma and Mysterio have a match and it's talking about sending someone to hell... I can't wait because I know Lucha Underground is going to have a simulated hell. Oh, so it's going to be awesome. I'm just saying. 
Yes, and, and it'll, I hope it'll they actually... be in the bathroom. Naturally, yes, naturally. Oh, naturally. <laughs> yeah, and, and I just hope that you know they have someone cast as the devil, like comes out, and maybe it could be like. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, maybe you could have the, the what's the guy that played Frodo come out and pretty be the devil. You know what was his name? So I think Elijah be, Wood. Yes, Elijah Wood could be the devil. Just come out and like swink and say, "Welcome to hell, Mysterio." <laughs> I don't know. Just my idea. <laughs> That's we went way off the deep end. I think it'd be really funny if it was Robert Rodriguez as Satan, but. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that, that probably makes more sense. I'm just saying. I mean, I guess since heaven is on the rooftop, it would have to be in the the basement. So I, I mean, there's a portal in there somewhere. That's how Drago moves around. So Yeah. It's a great place, the temple. If you're listening for the first time, like, what the hell are these guys talking about? <laughs> Trust me. The temple's amazing. It's a great place. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dario shows up back in the ring after the match and says that Lucha Underground has single-handedly revolutionized the business uh, of underground fighting with concepts like Dario's Dial of Doom and uh, the Battle of the Bulls and a a bunch of other things that they've done on this show. He calls himself a Lucha Libre genius and he wants Ultima Lucha 3 to be just as innovative, so... He is announcing the Cueto Cup, which is a 32-man single elimination tournament that will start next week, and the winner of the tournament will challenge for the Lucha Underground Championship uh, at Ultima Lucha uh, Trace. So, super, super awesome. I'm excited for this, Um, just because you may get to see a lot of people that you don't get to see as often on Lucha anymore. That's awesome. The cup looks yeah. pretty nice too. Uh, if I can find a picture, I'll post it in the in our little group chat here. Um, yeah, but it's, it looks great. Looks great. Yeah, it's, like, it's really exciting, and like you said, it's always great to have talent you don't see all the time, and to kind of throw them in there, it's a treat. So I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Me too. Especially because we might see some new people, and that's even better. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, we move on to this trios title match as Phoenix, Aerostar, and Drago defend against the uh, the Snake Tribe, which of course is Cobra Moon, Pindar, and Vibora. Um, this it's it's a fun little uh, six minute match or so. Aerostar does most of the work, doing all his flippies and stuff like that, which look great. Of course, last time we left Lucha Underground, the Snake Tribe had kidnapped Drago. He uh, ends up turning on his partners here. And uh, sprays, uh, I believe, Phoenix in the face with the mist, and um, sort of put uh, starts putting the beating on him. It's revealed over commentary that Drago is in fact in the spot that Cobra Moon is supposed to be in as a handicap match the entire time, and uh, they do a big triple team on uh, Phoenix to finish him off and pin him to officially win the trios titles. Um, Pretty crazy standard stuff here for Lucha Underground, if you ask me. But much necessary, right? Because now we have the full heel turn in front of the crowd for Drago instead of all the backstage segments. Yeah, it only makes sense, you know. And you love the backstage segments, but, you know, this works, especially in front of that crowd. You know, they ate it up, I'm sure. And so that's what's great about that. Yeah, absolutely. And then we have to... This is my favorite segment of this show. Uh, Mundo is hanging out backstage... Dario announced earlier that he's going to be defending the Lucha Underground Championship against Rey Mysterio in the coming weeks. Um, You have uh, Mr. Mandel show up again, who is, uh, of course, imitating Johnny Mundo and pretty much being a giant fanboy, uh, and seems to be his gopher, as uh, Mundo wanted to celebrate with some champagne. Uh, Mr. Mandel is like, "Uh, yeah, Taya said we're not doing that anymore. And then Taya shows up to tell Johnny that he's going to be defending the title against uh, Ray. And he sort of freaks out, and he suddenly wants to return to his JoJo so he can start training, because obviously Ray Mysterio is the biggest thing in Lucha Underground when it comes to competition in all these segments. And uh, Mundo's been wearing a towel the entire time, and he's about to head off towards the car, and Taya's like, uh, don't you want to put on some pants first? And he just looks at her deadpan serious and goes, Taya, there's no time for pants. And then walks off. <laughs> it's a that's beautiful awesome. thing. <laughs> oh, that is so great! And that's now that's YouTube worthy right there. 
Oh, uh, if you can't share that, you can't share anything from Lucha. It's that's the truth right there, buddy. That's the truth. Uh, and then we hit the main event: Boyle Heights Street Fight. Prince Puma takes on Mil Muertes. Twelve minutes. These guys are great together. They've wrestled each other so many times, and it plays out even better because now you have Vampiro sort of trying to pull the strings of Puma, getting them to do nastier and nastier things. <laughs> Uh, Puma breaks out a flipping Van Daminator into the corner, which is just super awesome. Uh, Katrina runs into the ring and bashes Puma over the head with a rock that she carries around, uh, for Meal. Uh, he sort of recovers in the corner as, uh, Vampiro runs to Puma's side, gives him a brick, and then Puma runs Meal over with the brick, and that's enough to KO him for the victory and move on, hopefully, from this feud, because these guys have been at it for a little while. But uh, this match is all kinds of awesome. Totally would recommend for sure. Sounds exciting. It really yeah, does. And, great. you know, I, I love that, you know, there could be a possibility that these two guys are kind of finishing off their feud to be really nice, too. But, um, yeah, I mean, not a bad ending if it is the ending to their feud. Yeah, not at all. And then that's our Lucha Underground for the week. Two really strong episodes coming out of the break, guys. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear because, you know, it is a great show. And, you know, I, I really need to get caught back up. And we're looking to do that. So, good stuff. Thank you, Paul, for leading us down that path. Uh, we are about to talk Dominion. Uh, yeah, that's right. We are excited about getting into that and previewing everything that's going to be taking place on those shows. Uh, but uh, before we do, uh, I want to let everybody know uh, Sean did not get to be a to be a part of episode uh, 250 part one this past Monday night. Um, so we'll be coming back and when we do, we're going to want Sean to kind of tell us what he thought about that finale. And then we'll be jumping into Dominion. So we'll be right back with all that right after this. King of Spot. New Japan Pro Wrestling. All right. So, I mean, what what were your thoughts on the finale? I mean, it's an incredible match. It should also be mentioned if you care about Dave Meltzer's star ratings. It's the first match, uh, first junior heavyweight match from New Japan. He's given a five star since 1997, uh, if that tells you anything about how great that match was. Yes, that match, I agree, was uh, great uh, on every level. I love the story in it. Just awesome finale. And uh, I know you were probably a little disappointed that Kushida won. But I think we kind of knew this could be in the cards. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and, and the story that sort of played out during the match was really great, so it was a little hard to be disappointed. Uh, especially that, I mean, there's a spot going around now from that match uh, where Kushida is just holding Osprey's arms and constantly stopping his face into the mat. It's absolutely brutal. Uh, and, and, I mean, the story, I mean, it makes sense, right? Kushida's riding this high. He can still lose here and disappear for a little bit if they want to do that. And uh, Hiromo obviously has fresh challengers now that he lost some matches during the tournament. But, um, you know, I, these guys deliver, right? It's hard to be upset about that. Exactly. It's I can't be upset about that at all. And you continue the story of Osprey not beating him. So uh, there's that as well. Will they ever get to tell that story the other way? We'll certainly see. Um uh, I mean, obviously they could if, uh, you know, Kushida wins on Sunday, but mm -hmm. uh, it's always, always possibly that he doesn't. So we'll, we'll, we'll say, I mean, they, they could they could decide to have some LIJ involvement and then he gets screwed over, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely see. I, I also like that uh, the LIJ tag, that was the other match I think definitely people need to go watch if they haven't yet uh, from the show. That was just a lot of fun and I mean, LIJ, when they get in those uh, multiple-person tags, they always deliver, but this one was just, like, extra good. Yeah, I mean, truly masters, I think, of the uh, multi-man tag right now, and it's it's a real shame that they can't just keep those never open weight titles on them and let them branch out a little more and just straight-up three-on-threes, because I wager those be great, too, but three-on-three, two-on-two, four-on-four, five-on-five, however they want to do it, LIJ knows what to do. Yeah, and it's you have to wonder if this is another destination for them to lose them again with the match that they added here, uh, sort of at the tail end uh, with this, I don't know what you call it, but a huge cluster of people in one match. They're calling it a gauntlet match. I think that's good enough for me. 
(laughs) (laughs) So uh, we start with a typical... I don't know why the doc got closed on me, but uh, you start with a typical um, young lion. Uh, This one's actually a six-man tag. Uh, David Finley, there's so much... Uh, so many spots taken up on this card, he has to revert back to his young lion roots, tagging with the rest of the young lions here. And uh, it, as as sad as it is to see him there, there's definitely, you know, things worth to see here. David Finley, Shota Uminu, and Tomoyuki Oka against uh, Hirai Kawato, Katsuya Kitamura, and Tetsuhiro Yagi uh, all... Uh, facing each other, uh, y- they just started using Yagi, right? On the main shows, yes. He's been on a couple of Lions Gates projects, though. So. Uh, okay, I, uh, I think Finley probably gets the. Well, I'd much rather see Finley here than Yoshitatsu, at least. So, mm-hmm. uh, Finley, Pin, and Yagi, probably. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to like in these. Uh... In, in these Young Lion matches, I talk about them as often as I can just because I'm always so impressed and I love watching these guys grow. But Umino, uh, obviously, he's Red Shoes' son. He has just such a natural way to connect with the crowd. Oka, of course, is the one who's been tapped to, to be the next, you know, big guy coming out of this class. Uh, Kawado's full of energy. He looks great as another junior competitor, uh, which I think is probably what Yagi will end up as, too. And then... Kitamura, of course, is the giantly, insanely, colossally built gentleman uh, from the waist up, waist down. He doesn't really pay attention to leg day, but uh, the dude's a monster. I think he's going to be something big for him, too, but definitely Team Finley here. They've been letting Oka win a lot recently, so I imagine he's going to make Yagi tap out with the Boston Crab here. Yeah, and now there's a picture going around of uh, Tanahashi and Kitamura washing dishes. Yes, with, uh, uh, with without no shirts, shirts on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you could definitely see the uh, the makeup of Mister Kitamura there. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, it, it's always fun to watch these guys, and uh, you get to see them grow. And you've gotten to see them a lot uh, between the. Lionsgate shows. I mean, because there was a while where you didn't get they they had so much talent that they couldn't have the young lions on at all. Right. Uh, but now you've gotten to see them more often, especially with them doing Lionsgate shows more often now too. So, uh, really cool if you're into seeing the young, the young lions every chance you get. Uh, so you get the uh, veteran tag here before you get into the whole crop of advertised matches. Hiroshi Tenzan. Jushin Thunder Liger, Manabu Nakanishi, and Satoshi Kojima against Tiger Mask. Tiger Mask W making an appearance again. Togi Makabe, Yuji Nagata. Uh, once again, Tiger Mask W being involved here. I think their team wins, but this should be fun. The veterans going against veterans is always uh, interesting, and uh, they, they tend to make these fun at least. Yeah, I mean, all the dads, they know what they're doing together, right? And Tiger Mask W. Still promoting that anime. Uh, I, I'm re- like it's supposed to be ending soon, right? So I wonder what they're going to do with the uh, gentleman who's underneath the hood when this is over, or if they're just going to keep the character going. I think that'd be really interesting. But yeah, it only has five episodes left, so mm-hmm. interesting. Either way, I'm with you. The though, guy that's Tiger underneath Mask. the hood, he was even doing uh, some voice work for it too. So. I saw that. I saw that. It looked very interesting. I still need to watch that anime. I might get around to it someday, but definitely Team Tiger Mask to win this one for sure. Yeah, certainly. Every time he's in a match, he wins. And as you should. You're, you're promoting the anime. Do it until it's over. Um, and who knows? You know, they, they could restart it or add more episodes, whatever they decide to do. They, they could add another arc and then just decide to add more episodes to it. But we shall see. Uh, so this starts the other than one special singles match because, you know, with Cody involved, there's always a special singles match somewhere. Right. Uh, but uh, this starts the string of title matches uh, that uh, New Japan has. If they do add the U.S. title to the main show, it's amazing that you could literally have eight of the nine matches be for titles on some of these cards. Unbelievable. But, uh, 
Yes, absolutely crazy. I mean, yeah, WWE could do it too when they, uh, it, you know, when they have these uh, joint shows. But it's just it's crazy. New Japan is very consistent with this, so you actually kind of have to appreciate them for it. Uh, so the gauntlet match for the never open weight six man tag team titles. Uh, of course, Los Ingobernal was Bushi Evil and Sonata defending against. The Bullet Club contingent of Bad Luck Fale, Hangman Page, and Yujiro. Uh, the Chaos contingent of Tomohiro Ishii, Toriyano, and Yoshihashi. I feel bad that Ishii is like at this level. Uh, Suzuki Goon, Taichi, Kanemaru, and Sack Saber Jr. Uh, what a pairing that is. And Taguchi Japan's Juice Robinson, Ricochet, and Ryusuke Taguchi. Well, you know this is going to be very chaotic. Right. Uh, at least it always and also depends on when the champions show up because they can show up at the beginning or we show them, see them show up at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it depends on where they decide to have the champions. But I feel like this is set up for LIJ to lose just with so much going on here. I think LIJ for sure loses. I pick Suzuki Goon uh, one because Zack Saber Jr. Two because it's them and they, they usually like to cheat, cheat and all that stuff. And, uh, three, I, you know, I'd like to think them doing something with Tai Chi during the tournament meant something. So maybe, uh, that's what they're going to do here is just try to bury him and all this madness. But I like that chaos team too. Ishiyano and Yoshihashi could be a really fun team to follow for a while. I agree. I like the, uh, chaos team. Uh, you've had it go between Taguchi Japan and LIJ for a long while. I think you take that chance here to break that. And I kind of have to agree with you. Suzuki Goon makes the most sense. Yeah, that's just sort of where I stand. Like I said, Chaos could do it. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised if they just give him right back to Taguchi Japan and just let that endless, endless feud continue on forever. Not that it's bad. I mean, they always have right. good matches. Or, but you do kind of like to see them branch it out a little bit. Uh, if you are going to have this title continue to be the, the hot potato of New Japan, uh, let some other people in here. And perhaps that's the road they take with this. So then you get the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles. Rapongi Vice defending against the Young Bucks. Yes, we've seen this match several times, but it is awesome every time we see it, so not complaining. I'd love to see Rapongi Vice retain, but I feel like the Young Bucks are going to get it back. Now with LA around the corner, my friend, it's it's going to them Young Bucks. They're going to have a title offense there for sure. They're going to try to do everything they can to make sure. I, I don't know why they're worried about drawing. They've already sold the place out three different times. Uh, just because they keep trying to add more seats and they don't last very long. So, uh, for sure, though, I think the Bucks get them here. I love Rapongi Vice too. I think they're one of the most unsung teams. Uh, maybe not in pro wrestling, but I think, well, fuck it, maybe yeah, pro wrestling. They're the most underrated team in pro wrestling. They're so good. They're so good. Every time they've been on a big stage this year, they've delivered. I'm really looking forward to watching this match. I'm looking forward to it too. You know what the Young Bucks bring? They do it. They bring it every time. Uh, Trent has really found, I think, his spot here in this tag team. <clears throat> I mean, they they paid off the story a little bit between the two guys, um, and there's still that tension here and there too uh, between them sometimes. Uh, so I appreciate that. And of course, Rocky is just he's Rocky. Gets you into every match. Um, he's going to speak a little Japanese to get the crowd into it, and uh, he's going to do his fun stuff. So um, maybe, maybe they continue to tease a little bit more of the uh, Rapongi bias going at it or a miscommunication or something causing the Young Bucks to win. Either way, Young Bucks are getting through here. Yeah. Also, so far, it should be mentioned, two matches have repeated from Wrestle Kingdom so far. The, the IWGP Junior match... And uh, they had a gauntlet match for the Never Open Weight titles uh, also at Wrestle Kingdom. So uh, I, I'm going to try to keep count of all the parallels here. <laughs> to be fair, that one had less teams. It's true. It's so, true. Yeah, I mean, you do have some of similar teams here, but um, 
just to point that out. Then you also have the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Titles with War Machine defending against the Grills of Destiny, who never seem to leave this spot. I hope War Machine win. They should win. They have been awesome. They've really taken off in New Japan. Look, they could have a good match. Your Grills of Destiny keeps getting better. Um, so I, I'm hoping for something good. Just, just please, War Machine win. No Gorillas of Destiny. We've had that time. I, I think War Machine does win here, too. The experiment should not end. They're also doing an IWGP tag team title match at uh, the July 1st and 2nd shows. Um, so I imagine they'll want another you know, team that the crowd is familiar with. And War Machine. And I, I love Gorillas of Destiny, too. They're such a fun team. They've gotten better and better. I imagine this match is going to be lots of fun. And uh, mostly, I just want to see what teams they can throw at the wall. I mean, they might just let War Machine hang it all the way until Lance Archer comes back, and then they can do that big killer Elite Squad War Machine match they've been wanting to do. Yes, please, we need to get that. Uh, Talk about just two teams destroying each other, and whoever is still living Mm -hmm. gets the tag titles. Uh, We need to see that. Yeah, for sure. So that, that's another reason you already have a match to go back to and watch and, and get you ready for whenever they do it here in New Japan. Right. Uh, so you get the uh, perhaps what I hope winds up being Cody's best match in New Japan because his opponent is Michael Elgin, and every time Michael Elgin touches anything in New Japan, it's great. Uh, so hopefully he and Cody can... Uh, finally get that big singles match that's that you really remember from a new japan show uh this is one of those times though like michael Elgin's a big guy in new japan like i don't know that you want cody going over him though this one is a tough one to call uh and before i do that i'm gonna give a cheap plug to elgin's promotion they're also gonna have him and cody at their show i think in june or july um up there in illinois so uh Definitely, if you if you like this match, check out that promotion whenever that match happens too, because Glory Pro is great. Uh, Elgin, I, I picked Elgin to win in the prediction, so I'm going to lean that way. But New Japan seems to want Cody to be at the forefront of this U.S. expansion for them, uh, and this this continues to think uh, lead to a lot of people thinking that he's not only going to sign with ROH, but he's also going to sign with New Japan going forward and. <laughs> I don't know what makes Sorry. a prettier picture. No, you're fine. I don't know what makes a prettier picture for your front man in the USA representing your brand than somebody carrying the IWGP US Championship and the ROH World Title. So, I, uh, I he's probably going to go over, but I'm picking Elgin. I, I'd love to see them restart him here and start pushing him back going towards G1 season. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on your points about Cody you know, being in that running uh, to have both titles. But I feel like, you know, you've done a lot with Michael Elgin. He's been your IC champion before. You already know he can do things for your promotion. The fans love him. He, I think he's starting to get a better reception when he goes to the States. I think he still has some of that stigma of how he left our race, and that kind of bothers people sometimes. But I think... You could also make the case that Michael Elgin could be the guy that holds the U.S. title. And if you haven't win against Cody, I think you're you're saying that maybe he's in that running. Uh, I think it that you know it, it depend. I mean, whoever wins, you could make a case that maybe they're one of the ones that wins the U.S. title. I I think that's a very smart way of looking at this, just because between Lethal and Page, I don't. I don't wager that they would be the front runners to win this so far either, and I had, I have to think that this is probably going to end up being your finale over there, July first or second for that belt too. Yeah, I mean, they obviously like Paige and Lethal because they bring them over. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, obviously Paige is still there. He's he's in a match on this show. Um, you know, so. It, I, it's possible they could, you know, swerve and, and, and do something like that. I mean, obviously, Jay Lethal has shown that he is worthy of carrying a title, and he can he can uh, sell the house for you. But I think 
these are the two guys, the two guy gens outside of uh, you know Kenny Omegas and the War Machines that you're really pushing as as guys that could do something for your company. And uh, yeah, I mean, if this isn't the final, I'll be shocked. I mean, other than you know them bringing a a guy from New Japan like a Kushida or something and saying, okay, I don't know if he would drop the RH the RH title by then. Um, the always TV title, and then say, okay, well, you're you're going to hang out in, you know, here for a little bit and and be the U.S. champion. I'm just using an example. They could try to find somebody else uh, that they feel like could resonate with the English fans, but it would probably make more sense to have a guy and have it first. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Fall A ends up in this tournament either. By the way, too, if we're going to spitball. A yeah, I mean, he could. Yeah, uh, certainly. I mean. Why not? Uh, you know, you're already doing those those shows in in New Zealand and Australia. So um, why not do a little bit more promotion with him holding a championship? Yeah. Uh, so then we go into straight four the four big titles, uh, one after another. This is potentially could be a string of four matches that could absolutely wow us. Or, you know, you could have some, you know, one or, or two that are a little bit of a letdown. But let, let's hope that none of that happens and that they just keep building over one and another. And we have another ridiculous run of matches just like at Wrestle Kingdom. So the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, Hiromu Takahashi against Kushida, a Wrestle Kingdom rematch. Ah... Uh... I really want to see Hiromu keep the title here, but I feel like if you're going to have Kushida win the tournament and everything, Kushida's finally going to get the best of Hiromu here and find a way to win after a tremendous match. Uh, perhaps uh, Kushida finally gets over the recklessness of Hiromu and is able to get him to tap out. I'm going the other way. I'm picking Hiromu to retain... Uh, obviously they're gonna they're gonna draw you in real quick and make you think Karuma's gonna beat Kushida again in like two minutes again and um, I I have to think every single encounter they've had is gonna play off well in this they're so good at calling back and I don't know if they can top what they did at Wrestle Kingdom because that match was absolutely incredible but they ha- they sure have an opportunity here and they're at the peak of the story so um, yeah I I want Hiromu to win. I'm picking Hiromu to win, and you can you can re have Kushida either disappear or try to figure out something else or or whatever. But I think you still have plenty of challenges left for Hiromu after this. I totally agree that you definitely have uh, challenge. I mean, you still haven't had the big match with Osprey, right? If you want to go that route, I mean, you could have another match with Dragon Lee. You could have a match with Ricochet. You could bring somebody else in, whatever they want to do. ACH and Bell this is, or... yeah, exactly. Um, especially ACH, if you don't want to bring you know Baldor back that quickly already. But I think um, this is a story that you could tell and have it end at Wrestle Kingdom, mm-hmm. and it would make sense, right? Um, you've gone this long with having Kushida beat Osprey and Osprey not get the win. I don't see why you can't do the same with uh, Kushida having that guy that he just can't beat. Um, exactly. But I don't know. I just have this feeling that they're going to just... They're going to pull the trigger a little early and just do it here. I wouldn't be surprised. Be I Obviously, I thought they were going to wait this out through the tournament. They did not. Um, and and it, Kushida is just so super popular over in Japan, too. Like, I don't think people really... Like, people love juniors, right? I don't think they just understand. I think... I don't know if they understand how much New Japan really prizes how much Kushida does for them, you know. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, he's he's uh, he's got his own podcast. He's one of the guys that, is, especially you know, for America, people look and, and want to see. Mm-hmm. That's important to them right now, as as we talked about. Uh, so you know, you got to put an eye on that as well, and just he is. He's been there. He's he's been consistent. He's been the ace. So right. Why not have him do it again? 
Uh, then you get the never open weight title match with Minoru Suzuki defending against Hiroku, Hiroki Goto in a lumberjack death match. I don't even want to know. What is so? Is there going to be Suzuki Goon and Chaos people around the ring, and then what, like barbed wire or something? And what, I, I mean, what are we doing here? <laughs> I. I would imagine Suzuki would roll down a guillotine and try to shove Hiroki Goto in it and then cut his head off. That I mean, that's <laughs> that's Suzuki right there for me. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't know what to expect here except these guys are going to beat the piss out of each other a lot. Uh, it's going to be great. I love Suzuki. I love Goto. I'm sure they're more than capable of pulling on a great match, but the other three title matches around him, I think, have way more prospect. Of course, to to be just as great as they were the first time around, and uh, Suzuki to retain here for sure, though. I want to see a favorite of mine and Goto get the title back, but I feel like Minoru Suzuki's done so well. Uh, he's freaking Minoru, and he keeps nailing it in these big matches. Um, this seems like a stipulation made for him. I think Goto's going to give it everything he has. Whether it's another Suzuki gun and Ember costing him the title, or it's just Suzuki just outright beating him with an inch of his life, Suzuki to win here and retain. And man, this one's gonna be brutal. I imagine. I'd love to see Ishii step up after this too, and we'll watch him and Suzuki just murder each other all over again. Oh, those matches no. were so great the first time around. Let's do it, please. Yeah, let's, let's do it. <laughs> My body is ready, New Japan. <laughs> yes. Uh, bodies are ready for brutalization here. As uh, Hey, you could even do it as a, a G1 USA match or something if they you wanted could. to. Uh, and then you get your two big title matches. Of course, also uh, Wrestle Kingdom rematches. Tetsuya Naito. Uh, defending against probably what would have been uh, Shibata spot against uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Hmm, they've done so much with Naito. Throwing that belt around, throwing that belt around, and throwing that belt around. Uh, breaking it, everything he possibly can. <sighs> Man, you know, Tanahashi's beat up. It's very easy to have Naito just win it again. But I feel like this is your way of perhaps, like you mentioned, introducing a new title and have Tanahashi be the one that, that holds it. And maybe Naito gets so pissed that he's got a new title, he wants to break that one too and just gets the urge to win it, you know, to get a rematch to win it back. Right. I, I picked Tanahashi here too. I like the idea of Tanahashi being... 1A and being that stepping stone that you need to get to to be considered in that same echelon with all these main event guys you have right now. And with so many people looking to break through and try to fill spots, I think it's a great place for Tanahashi to be, especially when he's still such a draw for him. And Naito should be competing for the heavyweight title at this point. So um, i like Naito to challenge um, maybe at the G1 special shows because they're supposed to do a heavyweight title match there. But certainly, I think King of Pro Wrestling is is uh, a heavyweight title match bound for Naito. Well, that's if, you know, because the idea was at first that Shibata might win the G1. Perhaps Naito takes that spot mm-hmm. now of, of, of winning the G1. And, you know, usually you're not a champion uh, when you do that, so... Him losing the belt here would open that availability for him to make a run. Right. Uh, which I would not be opposed to at all. Um, just, I think, you know, Tanahashi's obviously not winning again. Uh, Okada might also make a run, but we'll see. We'll see. And then, of course, you get the ultimate rematch of all the rematches. Kazuchika Okada defending the IWGP Heavyweight Championship against Kenny Omega. How can you top six stars? I don't know. But Kenny Omega did say the story is going to be different this time. Can they live up to the hype? Uh, I'm looking for teases for One Winged Angel for about 45 minutes. 
uh, because I wager that's about how long this match is going to go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like Omega to win. I really do. Um, I think you get a nice change of pace for the back half of the year. I think Kenny Omega going to the G1 specials would be a huge deal. I think going into King of Pro Wrestling later on this year with a fresh matchup and maybe Omega and Naito is a great direction to go. And, um, I just, you know, Okada's, I, as great as this title run is be, he's got to get caught eventually. And this is, I think this is the moment. Also, I think they go six and a quarter stars right here. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I don't know, so we're gonna sc- six and a quarter. Uh why not six and a half? You know, uh, so <laughs> I I mean, there's also possible they could do the draw here. Um, so I I wouldn't uh, hold that uh, against them, and then perhaps they do number three in the U.S. and maybe Kenny wins there. Um, I've seen that thrown around, and I wouldn't be too surprised if it happens but i think they'll just go ahead and give kenny the title here uh young bucks also champions you go in the elite champions and and uh, just do this full push for america and uh have him be champ going in the g1 usa shows have him be champ going into the g1 also i think is a, a great story for him after winning it last year uh, and then, you know, having Okada be in a different spot here, let's see how far he would get, mm-hmm. um, and, and all that, uh, perhaps even losing in the final or something, something into that, you know, perspective. But I, I just hope that they can certainly deliver uh, a wonderful match that we're talking about and comparing to the Wrestle Kingdom match. And I mean, maybe not just like for like, but just comparing it for many different other reasons or whatever. Just these guys got so much to live up to, and it's yeah, you know, I know they can do it. Every time we've said Okada couldn't do what Tanahashi he does, uh, with as determined as Omega is, and we already know how great Okada is. I I don't doubt them. If they go an hour, I um. I will be physically and mentally and just completely afraid for both of their lives. Because Okada said the first match almost killed him. Like, you go an hour, he might legitimately die. <laughs> yeah, uh, certainly. And, I mean, not to mention you're watching. The, the show starts at 3 a.m. Eastern oh. time. So by the time we get to that match, it might be 7 a.m. You've been up for four hours. you got to watch another hour. Another five you hours. You might be Scott literally. Gonza. Oh, my God. You might be like, oh, my God, I'm passing out. I'm, Guys, I'm I don't know. They're dying. I'm dying. The world is dying. Yes. <laughs> what a way to end the show. Everybody died watching it. <laughs> oh, someone save us Captain Planet. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like yeah. you know, instead of reporting the uh, the like the people in the building or whatever, you know, Melter would be like, "Well, um, about thousands of people died watching the stream because it was so long." <laughs> Six and a half uh, stars. It it was yeah. a tragedy, but there was so many people watching that it was like a record for New Japan World. So I don't know how big of a tragedy that is, and you know. <laughs> Right. Try to spin it in some crazy way that it's positive. Or, or Meltzer ending up in, you know, some kind of sensitivity training. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's Dominion, right, guys? That's it? Yes. All right. So we got a great one to look forward to. And, of course, we'll be checking that out. And then we'll review that next Monday. Uh, so you don't want to miss that show. That'll be episode 251, part one. Uh, but before we get out of this show, we need to go ahead and do our superstar of the week. That's right. We have crowned someone, and you, you will find out right after this. Superstar of the week. Take it away, Gary. All, all right. Well, the first point we have, Sean, is going to go to Neville. Well, uh, Neville defended his Cruiserweight Championship against TJP. 
in a, a pretty good match on 205 Live. And he also beat Austin Aries at uh, the pay-per-view uh, as well in a pretty good submission match that uh, I enjoyed. So a twofer for Neville. Yeah, and talking about two for two points will be heading over to Johnny Mundo, Paul. Johnny Mundo uh, finishes what him and Mac started last week, a terrific match uh, once again with the Mac this week, and he distinctly retains the Lucha Underground Championship this week, plus a, a home run of a segment where he declares that pants, there are no time for them. <laughs> that is golden. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> uh, I love that still. Uh, three points are going to, to be heading over to The Miz, Sean. Yeah, The Miz recaptured their crown championship. And I like the way they did it. Not everybody else did. Uh, but, uh, you know, not everybody can be happy with what happens sometimes. Uh, and what did he do? I can't. Totally remember that what he's doing for right now. Yeah, the Miss TV segment. Um, yeah, so that was awesome. Uh, and we got four points heading over to Samoa Joe Paul. I mean, in two days, WWE created maybe the most uh, believable challenger to Brock Lesnar yet uh, since. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on how you feel about Goldberg, but. Uh, wins the number one contendership in that Fatal 5-way in that incredible match at Extreme Rules. And then the next night comes out and just knocks the ball out of the park in that segment with Paul Heyman, um, where he straight up looks like a serial killer. And that's the best Joe. Definitely. And, and man, I mean, oh, wow. Knocked this one out of the park this week. Um, but there's another guy that, you know... We have to give a lot of credit to, and he definitely earned this Superstar of the Week this week for the five points, Kushida. Yeah, he had a tremendous match with uh, Will Ospreay to end the Super Juniors and win the event for the second time in his career. Now he gets to go on this weekend and fight for his championship. Definitely. So there. There you go. Kushida, well-deserved. Uh, really happy for him this week. And, of course, trust me, this guy is going to be moving up the list as we go. He, he's having a great year so far. Well, there you go, guys. That is our episode for tonight. Uh, lots of great stuff to get into. I had a lot of fun, and we hope you did, too. Uh, lots of great stuff to, to go through. But next week, we'll have more great stuff, so you don't want to miss that Uh Plus, you know, we'll also be doing all those great review shows. If you haven't checked them out, you go check them out. Trust me. Uh, they're a lot of fun to listen to. And uh, there's something that, you know, gives you some information on some of these WWE shows that we cover. Uh, but, yeah, once again, W2Mnet.com. Don't go, you know, don't forget to go check that out. Also, 411mania.com. We're happy to be partners with those guys. Subscribe to Wrestling to the Max or the W2M Network. Both are great. Just one gets you just and us. You, the other uh, gets you everybody at the w 2 Network. Mm-hmm. If you enjoyed our preview that Paul and I did, you can read what uh, all the New Japan contingent on the site uh, think as we all get to do our predictions and preview each one of the matches as well on W2Net.com. So make sure you check that out. Yeah, lots of great stuff. So don't miss a minute of the action. Go check check us out on wherever you find. Plus, you know, hey, people find us all sorts of places. They find us on YouTube. If they may find us on the Apple Podcast. They can find us everywhere. So, hey, you know, do your due diligence. Find us where you like to find us. But make sure you tell a friend. That always helps us and also gets the word out about, about the show and gets more voices in this conversation. That's what we love. We love to talk to all you guys and get to know what you think about what's going on in the world of wrestling. So there you go. All right, well, we will see you guys next week. But until then, if you're not living life to the max, not living life at all, you know it. Hey. the
following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.